What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another video. I'm Teddy Westside. Today we are going to install the Forge Motorsports blow-off valve which I ordered from ECS Tuning on my 2017 Mark 7 GTI. Okay, so the first step in this process is going to be to remove this pipe of the air intake. Uh, to do this you will need hose clamp pliers. I actually tried to do this without hose clamp pliers because I didn't have them before and it's it's not worth it. Just go spend the money and get the tool. Um, so we're going to take this off first. Uh, and then there's another hose clamp back here, which you will need a 7 millimeter socket or wrench to get to. Um, if you, you ha still have the stock intake like I do, it's not very easy to get off. Uh, you don't really have a whole lot of room, so it does take like a little bit of time to get to it. So after you loosen that hose clamp, all you want to do is pop off the front and then you can pop off the back as well and set that aside. Uh, so right here is your actual diverter valve. There are three screws that we're going to need to take off in order to take off the actual diverter valve. But first you want to remove the wire plug for it. Uh, to do that, you just there's a little clip here that you just press in and pull up. Okay, so the next step is to actually remove the stock diverter valve. Uh, there are three screws that you're going to need to take off. Uh, I am using a 5 millimeter Allen key and a wobble extension socket so that it gives me a little bit more um, room and ability to kind of get to it without being straight head on. This is my first time ever using wobble sockets and they are absolutely incredible. Uh, so let's remove these screws now. I'm going to start with the bottom one as that is the hardest to see and reach. a pain in the ass so I definitely suggest doing that one first. I knew I was gonna do that. I just dropped the f***ing screw. If it makes you feel any better your battery's about to die. <laughs> Is it really? Yep. <laughs> All right, well, we can fix that. Oh, I can't believe I dropped that screw. Okay, so what you wanna do when you're doing this is you wanna make sure that you always, always, always have your hands on the bolts. Uh, I didn't do this and I actually dropped one down. I lost it probably forever. Um, shout out to the guy at Home Depot to giving me the new bolt for free. Um, but once you get the diverter valve off and all those screws unbolted, your next step is to put the new O-rings on the new blow-off valve. Obviously, the big one goes on that big, big hole, and the little one goes in right here, just like that. And then you want to bolt it back on where you just took the diverter valve off. Um, I'm going to bolt mine with these hoses up. That's what I saw in other videos and the directions. Uh, it just gives you a little bit more... Uh, access to these in case you ever need to do anything with them in the future. Uh, so right now I'm going to try to take my time and bolt this blow-off valve back on and we'll get back to it after that. Okay, so after the blow-off valve is mounted, the next step is to take off this hose right here. This will be your uh, engine vacuum source. And then we were going to bolt the solenoid to the screw hole located directly below this hose that we want to take off. It is actually a threaded hole ready to go for you, and uh, you just use the screws that are provided. I'm going to use a little pick tool to help me loosen up this hose. Um, you can cut this. I would suggest not because it's a factory hose, and you can still use it in this in this setup. This is the orientation that I'm using for the uh, the solenoid. This is going to be the hole, obviously, that bolts to the part on the actual engine block. Uh, a little note that I saw on some other videos, if you don't tighten this bolt all the way, it'll give you the ability to, to kind of move it up and down um, while you're actually putting it all together because once it is in, it's going to need to kind of be orientation down like this. 
So make sure when you're doing your hoses that you have enough slack for that to happen. Okay, so we just took off this pipe or this hose from this clamp right here. Then we want to insert our T and then cut a little piece of the hose that's provided in the kit and then just connect it right like that. And then you want to try to tuck the wires a little bit out of your way so that they don't get all messed up by your intake once you put that back on. Then you need a part of the hose which you're going to connect to your solenoid and the front part of it is what I'm calling it to the T. and connect. Just like that. Out of the way, you got plenty of slack so this, that the hoses aren't kinking, and then we're on to the next step. Okay, so now we wanna take a hose from the top part of that Plastic 90 that we just connected to, and we're gonna run it to this top one right here. Again, you wanna make sure that you give yourself some slack that none of your lines kink, and you need to continue to remember that your intake will be here, so you wanna to try to route it as far away as you can so that it never really touches. Okay, so the last hose that you need to run goes to from the back of the solenoid, which I believe is a like a metal connector to help you, and then it goes to the bottom uh, metal connector of the actual blow-off valve. Uh, once you get that, then you need to use the connector from the kit to plug from the factory harness into the solenoid so that everything works properly and doesn't give you any check engine codes. Um, and then once you're done hooking this up, uh, you should go back and use the zip ties that they give you to seal off every hose that we, we put on. Um, I would have to say the factory ones are kind of okay since there's no hose clamp there. Uh, but definitely put it on every one so that when your car is under pressure, uh, the hoses won't blow off. Uh, once I finish all this up, we'll go get some sound clips of what it sounds like. Okay, so as you can see, the car's running right now. I'm letting it get up to temp. Uh, don't forget, obviously, to put this pipe back on and tighten up the solenoid. Uh, I didn't talk about that when I was actually doing it, uh, so make sure that you actually do it. Uh, I don't have any check engine lights as of now. I haven't hit the gas at all. Like I said, I'm trying to let the engine get up to temp, and then once it does, we'll go for a ride and make sure everything's working and, and holding up the boost. I'm really happy. I think that sounds amazing. I cannot wait to hear it on the road. Uh, we're gonna take you with us so that you guys can uh, hear what it sounds like from inside the car as well. Okay, so we're getting ready to pull onto the highway where I'll do a little bit of pull. I'm in second gear right now, uh, just so that you know. Uh, it's not super loud from the inside, even with the music off and the AC off. I mean, you can definitely hear it, but I don't think it would be considered obnoxious by any means. But uh, here we go. 5,000 RPMs. That's the loudest I've heard. Whoa, Jesus. Wow, you almost witnessed an accident. Holy So obviously the more that you get, as I recoup from that Jeep almost killing us, the more you get into boost, obviously the louder it's gonna be. Um, but again, I don't think it's anything obnoxious. If you don't want the sound, then just keep the diverter valve and put a turbo muffler delete or something on. Um, but so far, I'm very happy. I'm enjoying. I think it sounds amazing, and I can't wait for the next modification. Thank you for watching. Comment down below any questions that you might have, and I'll try to answer anything that you ask. Uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, comment, and share the video. Appreciate it, guys. Have a good one.